And in our top business story, His Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum, the president of the Dubai Civil Aviation Authority, the chairman of Dubai Airports, and the chairman and chief executive of Emirates Airline and Group, inaugurated the most eagerly awaited global airport industry exhibition and knowledge sharing platform in Dubai today, with over 300 exhibitors from 40 countries on board. The 15th edition of the airport show, with the third edition of Global Airport Leaders Forum and the second edition of the Travel Catering Expo as co-located events, is expected to attract 8,000 industry professionals during its three-day run. According to organizers, the airport show offers an opportunity to experience the latest aviation technologies and innovations from around the world and also allow participants to meet global suppliers and service providers who can help meet their procurement needs. The show has recorded 38% growth in participants for the Hosted Buyers Programme, with an all-time high participation of 127 hosted buyers. The number of organizations, including civil aviation authorities, airlines and other aviation-related bodies participating in the program this year has increased to 53. That's a 55% jump from last year. In 2014, the event gathered 6,441 aviation professionals who networked, sourced their product requirements and created over 20 billion US dollars worth of regional business possibilities. Well, the, the exhibition this year has um, it's grown by 20%. Uh, we have 20% more exhibitors at the show this year. In terms of we bring buyers to the show, we have buyers from Qatar Airways, from uh, Gulf Air, from Saudi Airlines, from Armenia, from Turkey, from Singapore. So it, it, the show traditionally brings um, an audience of global suppliers and buyers from the region. But the buyers have come from much further afield, which is which is signifying the interest that buyers from around the world now take in this event. Um, the event itself has become this year the largest annual event for airport equipment and, and uh, services and technologies in the world. Um, and it, a lot of it is thanks to the collaboration we get from the authorities in the UAE and even in the region, um, especially with Dubai. Actually today in uh, Dubai Airport Show we are showing one of our products which is Infogate where we can interact directly with the customers or the passengers and we can help them easily to find their way if they have lost, if they lose their way of anything. Uh, other than this, the system can be interacted with the database of the whole uh, city that we are going there. So we can guide them, even the customers where they are going after to the metro or his lost passenger, we can give him the gate number. We can actually, since we are not interacting with a machine, we have an operator behind this, we can have like 21 languages, okay? So we can have many operators, even remotely. We can support you in Chinese, English, Arabic, or any other language which we can train the operators to use it. The UAE has the number one highest percentage of smartphone users in the world at 73.8%. That's according to the latest report for 2014. Korea came in second with 73%, Saudi Arabia with 72.8%, Singapore was next with 71.7% and then Norway at 67.5%. Mobile subscriptions are also on the rise as smartphone penetration within the UAE stands at 78%. The report also revealed that Etisalat leads in terms of market share with 54% and Do with 46%. Mohammed Nasser Al Ghanim, the Director General of the Telecommunications Authority, was quoted as saying that we want to develop a competitive framework which encourages the development of new products. The report also revealed some of the most popular smartphone brands, which included Samsung with a 35% market share, followed by Apple with 24%, then BlackBerry in third with 21%. The top three social networks were Facebook, Google+, and then LinkedIn. It was also revealed that out of every group of 10 young people between 16 and 34 in the Emirates, eight of them owned smartphones. Standard & Poor's Ratings Services has affirmed Sharjah's long and short-term foreign and local currency sovereign credit ratings with a stable outlook. 
The credit ratings agency said in a statement that we affirm our ratings for Sharjah at AA1. The stable outlook balances our view that Sharjah's nominal GDP growth will still remain strong against the Sharjah government's relatively high and rising interest burden. They added that the ratings are supported by Sharjah's continued solid growth and low government debt burden. The four largest sectors in the economy are real estate and business services, about 20%, manufacturing 16%, mining, quarrying and energy at 13%, and wholesale and retail trade at 12%. S&Ps also estimates that government expenditures will equate to 8% of GDP in 2015. Engineering and services company Kony has announced the beginning of installation activities at the Kingdom Tower construction site in Saudi Arabia's Jeddah as a part of the completion of the overall Kingdom Tower project owned and developed by the Jeddah Economic Company. The CEO of Jeddah Economic Company and owner and developer of the Kingdom Tower and Kingdom City, Munib Hamoud, said that the tallest tower in the world is all about human ingenuity and strength of the materials used. And Kony is the only vertical transportation service provider in the world capable of delivering such a technology. Representatives of Kone added that Kone Arico has been involved in the planning and design of all vertical transportation systems at the Kingdom Tower over the past two years in collaboration with Kony's global experts. On completion of the project in 2018, Kingdom Tower elevators will have the capability to travel at a speed of over 10 meters per second, with double-deck elevators reaching the highest livable floor in the world in 52 seconds. Furthermore, officials involved in elevator technology added that the high-speed elevators will rise 660 meters to the observation deck at the tower, making it the world's highest elevator rise. Ultimately, we chose Kony for a number of reasons, primarily because of their technological advancements. Uh, they have a number of features that, that could give the tower. The, cutter, the tower is about cutting edge technology. It's about you know the, the newest in everything and the strongest in everything. You know, so it's, a, it's about the strength of material and the ingenuity of people. So Kony has it all, and uh, uh, it's about the price at the end of the day. So we got a good price, very good product, and. Uh, I think it will be, they will do a very good job. What we actually did is to create a rope which is much lighter. What that does is you can now go much higher than before. Uh, you can also, uh, that, that reduces the weight of ropes dramatically. Uh, if we reduce rope weight dramatically, we also re reduce the total weight of moving mass because ropes can go up to 60% of the mass. And the result of that is that you also use less energy. Uh, what we call this new innovation ultra rope and we have it here in my pocket. This is ultra rope. Uh, it is a carbon fiber rope, uh, very light, and uh, because it's uh, with a high friction coat on it, we can really use it in super high buildings. Uh, it also is very light, so it doesn't, uh, it removes, reduces the energy consumption dramatically. Not only dramatically, uh, we also see that because it's so light, uh, we don't get similar issues when buildings start swaying, that ropes go in resonances in certain places. Uh, with this, we have to go much higher, much, much higher to get this resonance uh, thing. So we don't have the downtime of resonances as uh, either. So this is an unbelievable uh, invention which we have for, for high rise.